I'm Suzette Martinez Standring, and you're watching It's All Right with Suzette, a writing show that focuses on authors' works. And interest in holistic medicine is growing, and Chinese health practices are among the oldest and the most effective in the world. Today, I'm really excited to have our guest, Stephen Cardoza, a doctor in Chinese medicine and author of Chinese Holistic Medicine in Your Daily Life. Combine acupressure, herbal remedies, and Qigong for integrated natural healing. It was published in January 2017 by Llewellyn Press. And working in the alternative field since 1985, Stephen Cardoza earned his Master of Science degree in traditional Chinese medicine from the American College of Traditional Chinese Medicine in 1994. He is a nationally certified and licensed acupuncturist and herbalist in both Massachusetts and California. He has taught Qigong, Qigong, Tai Chi, and related practices for over 30 years and is currently on the faculty of Brookline Tai Chi, where he teaches weekly. Some of you may remember him from a previous show uh, where he spoke about his other book, Chinese Healing Exercises, a personalized practice for health and longevity. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you so much, Suzette. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks it, for having me back. It is such a thrill to have you because your book is so well written and so easy to understand. It's a very comprehensive guide on Chinese medicine and all its related practices that I fear that half an hour is not going to be enough. But I know that you're going to leave the viewers wanting more. Well, we'll so, get in everything we can in the time that we've got. Uh, you know, talking about how comprehensive it is, I noticed that you have divided the book into two sections. So do you, and I think that if you could explain that, it will probably give a great overview of what you've done. Excellent place to start. Um, so yes, the book is written in two sections. Um, my goal is to try to give everyone as much as they can possibly get from this book. So the first half of the book is primarily about Chinese medical theory. It's the basics of Chinese medical theory, so it doesn't get really bogged down into a lot of the minutiae and details that, that, say, a student of Chinese medicine going to college to learn would have to um, absorb. But it gives the everyday person a really good understanding of what Chinese medicine is, how it works, how all the pieces of Chinese medicine integrate. The second half of the book teaches people how to actually apply all of the things that you learn about in the first half of the book. So the second half of the book, we do uh, all of those things that you mentioned in the subtitle of the book. I'll teach people how to do acupressure on themselves, how to use Chinese herbal remedies for mm -hmm. particular health challenges, how to do uh, Qigong practices. There's five Qigong practices in the book and how to actually use food therapies, which are also not listed in the subtitle, but that's contained in the book too, and then how to combine all of those different aspects to address particular health challenges. So if someone has uh, stomach problems, they would learn how to do acupressure and take herbs and do the qigong and, and change their, their diet specific to helping them uh, heal a digestive problem, for an example, because all of those things do work in a supportive way and can be targeted for specific health challenges. Now, for some viewers who are unfamiliar with the term Qigong, could you explain that? Sure. Qigong is a, a health building system based on movement. Um, it actually involves three specific types of regulation. So you regulate your body, which is the moving part of Qigong. So, the, so that the um, viewer understands, there are also Qigong where so you're completely still. So I don't want you to think that every Qigong involves movement, but the majority of them do. So you regulate your body, you also regulate your breathing, mm. and, you, and you regulate your breathing in two particular ways. One is how you actually breathe, which would involve allowing your abdomen to fully expand on an inhalation, allowing your abdomen to fully retract on an exhalation, and then also how you would pattern your breath to match the particular Qigong practice that you're doing. So there's two ways that the breathing is regulated. Then the third regulation is regulating your mind, and part of regulating your body and part of regulating your breathing does involve your mind 
telling your body what to do, teaching you how to breathe properly. But in more, uh, as you get more subtle with the regulation of the mind, you use your mind to directly perceive tangibly chi. And chi is the energy of your life. And the purpose of every qigong is to give you more facility in working with the energy of your life to, to, for a lot of different reasons, to build energy in general, to reduce stress, to improve the functionality of all your internal organs. And then you can use specific qigongs to target specific health challenges, to generally promote longevity. And for people who are interested in cultivating spiritual practice and awareness, you can use qigong for that as well. So it's very wide ranging. And, and thus the holistic aspect of it. You know, you talk about acupressure, there's dietary advice, um, herbs, and what you're talking about, Qigong, involves meditation and movement, specific meditation and movement that will help uh, facil facilitate health, especially in particular kind of conditions. Exactly, yes. Now, you're a doctor of Chinese medicine, so can you give the viewers an idea of some of the bigger differences between Western medicine and Chinese medicine? Okay, sure. Western medicine is um, commonly referred to as sort of a reductionist type of medicine, meaning a Western doctor is going to look for the smallest unit in the body that's causing a physical problem. And that smallest unit can be a bacteria or a virus, or it can be um, a, a tumor or a growth, or it can be a chemical imbalance. So a Western doctor is going to look for that smallest unit that's creating the problem that the patient's complaining about and try to fix that. And usually that involves identifying a disease and then treating the disease. In Chinese medicine, uh, it's a little bit different. Now, a Chinese physician or any holistic physician, because Chinese medicine is not the only holistic medicine that right. exists. There's a lot of other holistic systems. In a holistic system, a physician is going to look at the totality of the person, see how and where and why their, their system's out of balance, why particular organs may not be communicating so well with each other, what uh, pathogenic influence has affected a person and thrown their body out of balance and is causing these symptoms to manifest the way they do. So a Chinese physician doesn't actually look specifically to cure a disease. They look to rebalance a person, to bring the person back into a state of harmonious health. And that allows the body's own natural innate healing abilities to get rid of those disease symptoms. When a person is in harmony, um, disease won't exist. When qi is flowing freely, disease doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a uh, phrase in Chinese medicine, it's also used in qigong, where, there, where qi is uh, obstructed, there is pain, and that can actually be expanded to mean there's disease. Where qi flows freely, there's no pain, there's no disease. So when you use acupressure, when you use herbs, when you use qigong, you're always influencing the way qi works in your body and you're working to bring the body back into harmonious balance so that health, energy, mm -hmm. uh, presence of mind, mood, everything uh, is, feeling, uh, is, is working better and the person feels better all around. Your book, as I said, is such a comprehensive, easy to read guide. However, for people, you know how everyone is, you know, instant gratification and perhaps they have particular um, conditions, maybe it's insomnia, maybe they're migraines, maybe it's itching, whatever it might be. Uh, do they have to read the entire book or is there a way of getting to the answers inside your book quickly? Yeah, actually that was another consideration I had when I wrote the book because just as the book is in two parts, a lot of people don't want the theory, they just want to learn the practice and a lot of people are also just going to want to work on something that is immediately practical to themselves. So the last chapter of the book is where I teach people how to combine all of those modalities in um, basically a, a um, uh, I don't want to call it a disease guide, but it, uh, patterns of harmony, disharmony guide. So if someone does have breathing problems, they can look up 
asthma or common cold or flu in the back of the book mm -hmm. and they'll be taught the acupressure and the herbs and the qigong and the food therapies that'll address just that. So then of course you will have to go back in the book and pick out those particular things and learn how to do them mm -hmm. but that will give you a very focused way to use the book to immediately improve your health and you, you really don't have to use the rest of the book if you don't want to. The more you understand about Chinese theory, the more freedom you have to improvise and, and vary the prescriptions that I do give you for particular disease conditions. But you can go right to the, to the condition that matters most to you and get the, uh, get the result you're looking for that way very quickly. Which is a perfect segue into the second half of this show, where Stephen Cardozo, doctor of Chinese medicine and author of Chinese Holistic Medicine, is going to demonstrate self-acupuncture, self-acupressure, acupressure, yes. and um, different breathing exercises and movement through Qigong that you can do at home. I find this to be a great book and a wonderful guide. And I do agree with you. When you have a foundational understanding of how it works, the mechanics of it, when you read the second part of the book that talks about diet and herbs and movement, meditation, it makes a lot more sense. And we do have to take responsibility and um, own our wholesomeness. Well put, yes. So stay tuned for the second half with Dr. Stephen Cardoza, and we'll see you in just a few seconds. Welcome back. And we're tuning in with Dr. Stephen Cardoza, a doctor of Chinese medicine. And this is going to be the fun part. He is going to demonstrate Qigong exercises and acupressure uh, point work that you can do at home to alleviate certain conditions. I'm really excited about this. And I'm here in the studio, and I've never done this before, and he's going to teach me and you how to do this at home yourself. So I'm really excited to turn the show over now to Stephen Cardoza. Hi folks. Um, so what we're gonna do now, Suzette, is I wanna teach you a very, very simple Qigong exercise. And this is in part to allow our viewers to just see how easy Qigong can be uh, and to explain the type of health benefits someone might get even from a simple practice like this. Oh, good. So first, let me show you, and I believe this image will come up on the screen for our viewers at home. This is the meridian system. So you can see that all of the acupuncture meridians tend to travel vertically up and down through the body. The meridian we're gonna be working on in this particular Qigong is called the Dai Mai, which means the girdling vessel or the belt vessel. Mm. And you can see that it girds or travels like, like a belt would around your waist. Mm. What the Dai yes. Mai does is it, it intersects all of those vertical acupuncture meridians. It connects them, it harmonizes them, it allows for free flow of qi through all of the channels in your body. So, so this very simple exercise is gonna have a fairly far reaching influence on your health because it's gonna be influencing all of the acupuncture channels in your body. Particularly, so, so the Dai Mai, just like a belt, goes up the front of your, of your body, crosses over your hips, and intersects, intersects your kidneys in the back, and goes all the way to your spine. Um, whenever you do a Qigong that benefits your kidneys, it can help things like bone density. So as people get older, Ooh. osteoporosis is a significant concern. Um, this can actually strengthen your bones. Um, it can Im improve your vitality overall because the kidneys are the seat of your vitality. Um, it can improve your sexual energy. It improves your genital performance. It can make your hair a little shinier. Um, so if you, all, if you notice, a lot of these things that it can improve are things that tend to decline as people age. So it actually can work as an anti-aging practice as well and have that, that level of benefit too. And extra bonus, it's very calming. It's both calming and energizing at the same time. Well, I'm ready to have my vessel girdled. All right. 
<laughs> so let's start with, let me first show you what you're going to be doing with your hands. So you're going to have your hands open and you're going to be using this point in the center of your palm. This is called Lao Gong. It's a very sensitive point that projects Qi and absorbs Qi ah. when people practice Qi Gong, when people do medical Qi Gong. Uh, even if you know anything about that, it's still the most energetically sensitive part of your hand and will influence chi flow through this pathway that we're going to be guiding along right now. Okay. So uh, the first thing you want to get comfortable with is having your hands face your torso and trace that Dai Mai or that belt vessel or the girdling vessel. So your arms are going to move to your sides and then they're going to go all the way to your back. And if you can, you want to have that Lao Gong point, the palm of your hand, facing your kidneys here. Mm. Now, now, some viewers might have really tight shoulders, and in that case, as your arms move around, your hands might not be able to stay with your palm facing your back, but what you can do is you turn your hands so that this point, this point's called Hu Gu, and it's the second most sensitive point on your hand. You'll turn your hand so that Hu Gu will face your kidneys, and then as your hands come back around forward, you turn your hands palm towards your Dai Mai as soon as you're able. Mm -hmm. So let's first just do that a couple or a few times. So okay. trace that line around your waist. And remember, just like a belt or a girdle, it, it raises a little bit as it comes to your hips. And then it lowers a little bit as your hands come forward to your low belly. Mm -hmm. So you're tracing the line up to the sides, to your back, back to the sides again, going down your belly and coming to the very center of your belly. Now, at the very center of your belly, a little below your belly button, there's another important energy center that the Dai Mai intersects it's called the Dan Tian. The Dan Tian is the energy center that has to do with everything about your physical health. So wow. that's another intersection point. So we're intersecting all the vertical meridians, we're intersecting your kidneys, we're intersecting the Dantian now too. Does it so, matter if your um, fingers are open or closed? They should be a little closed just, okay. to, just to kind of concentrate the energy that's coming out your palms. Okay. And here's another thing that you can do, um, you can practice and get better over time. You can bring your hands closer and closer and closer to your belly until you feel some kind of a contact, like maybe you feel a cloud around your body, or maybe you feel a little magnetism around your body. That's the best point for you to mm -hmm. keep your hands that distance away from your body to move the most chi when you do this particular exercise. So now keeping, trying to keep your hands at that distance and feel for that connection that you just felt. Yes. As you move your hands behind and going through your kidneys and going all the way to the center of your back and then coming forward over the top of your hips, down your belly to your Dantian again, or that energy center just below your belly button. Can you show the viewers what it looks like when you're doing it from behind? Sure. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. here I'm moving my hands slightly over my hips yes and then my hands have to rotate in order for my palms to stay facing my kidneys so here yes. if i move my hands all the way to my back you can see that my mm -hmm. palms are facing my kidneys right there mm -hmm. and then uh, um, my shoulder blades are spreading away from my spine as my hands move forward now i'm going to do it one more time because as i was talking and moving my hands to my kidneys what I did was I let my shoulders raise, and your shoulders shouldn't raise when you do this. Mm. I let my shoulders raise because um, I was moving my hands towards my back and I was talking with you at the same time. Mm -hmm. So if you notice, my shoulders are staying down. My palms are staying facing my torso the whole time. Here, my shoulder blades are very close to my spine. Mm -hmm. And as I move my hands forward, my shoulder blades spread very far away from my spine. Uh -huh. The first point on the kidney meridian makes your chi rise. Uh -huh. When you shift your weight to your heels, you're stimulating a point called the Shermian point, which loosely translates as insomnia point because that brings your chi down. So yes. when people 
have trouble sleeping, they have too much energy in their head, yeah. the heel point will help bring that down oh, so I you get a better that. night's sleep. So here, as you're shifting your weight forward and shifting your weight back, you're bringing mm -hmm. your energy up and down. Very good. So you do that with your hand movement. Oh. So, oh. so when your hand movements are, when your hand's in front of you, yes. you have your weight shifted to the ball of your feet. Okay. And then as you move your hands rearward, you shift your weight to your heels. Yes. And then you move your hands forward and your weight shifts forward. So it all works together. You move your hand rearward and your weight shifts rearward. Mm -hmm. So you have that up and down flow of chi from your feet, which actually feeds more energy into your dai mai, into that girdling vessel that we were talking about. Yes. So that brings more energy to all of your 12 acupuncture meridians. It brings more energy to your dantian and it helps improve the health of your kidneys. Great. Now, we have about five minutes left, how time flies. It does fly, Can you it? do a couple of acupressure, acupressure um, exercises? Sure, I can And then we you... really want to know how to get a hold of you okay, and your sure. book. Uh, so, in the book, I teach people um, approximately 100 acupressure point locations. I'm just going to show you one uh, so that people can understand how, or maybe show you two. Okay. I'll show you how acupressure can be applied. Um, we talked about this point in the context of the last Qigong exercise we did. This point's called Hagu. It's a point on the large intestine meridian, which begins in your index finger mm -hmm. and runs up your arm and it actually oh, yeah. ends at the, at the opposite side of your nose. And then it also communicates internally with the large intestine. So if you know that you have a large intestine concern, uh, or this particular large intestine point is also called the command point for your head. So if you have colds or flus, if you have headache, if you have uh, some eye disturbances, if you have some uh, just, uh, dry mouth, disturbances or any mouth, anything going on in your head, this is going to offer some benefit to mm -hmm. it, as well as benefiting the health of your large intestines. So when you locate that point, yes there's a couple of things you want to do. One is you want to put enough pressure so that you're uh, taking up any slack in your skin and you're mm -hmm. getting to where the muscle is there. Yes. Now, if you want to increase the flow of energy through the large intestine meridian, you can do this type of massage where you're going to put more energy going in the direction that that meridian flows because the meridian goes from your index finger yes. up. Uh -huh. So you do something like this. So you can see there's a strong push this way and then a weaker push back that way. So that stimulates it. They see that's even making my finger jog as I yes. push up this way. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm moving chi up the large intestine meridian, which is going to increase chi flow in the large intestine meridian. Now, if you have a large intestine excess, you don't necessarily want to increase chi flow there. So say uh, maybe... Uh, after eating meals, your lower abdomen in particular might feel heavy and congested and things aren't moving properly. So there's something that's like excessive and stuck in there. And you might want to uh, reduce some of the energy that's stuck there. So then you do the same thing, but in the opposite direction. Pointing that way. So then you, yeah, then you'll be putting more pressure yeah. against the flow of the meridian. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah. I see. And other way you can tonify or, or sedate, which is tonify just means strengthen, sedate means kind of calm, calm something down, is if you make a clockwise circle like this. So here I'm, I'm making this, I'm doing that same amount of pressure. So I'm going mm -hmm. through the skin into the muscle. Oops. This clockwise circle is tonifying. It builds energy in the meridian. It builds energy in this point. And this point does have many specific functions that um, are unique to it, even though it is on the large intestine meridian. Like I said, it's a command point for the head. If you want to sedate the point, you would make counterclockwise circles. Okay, I see. And how and why you'd select whether you want to sedate or tonify is explained in great detail in the book, so people can actually learn how to do these things in the most beneficial and advantageous and ways. And how for many um, exercises did you say that you have for these kind of? Oh, gee. Issues in the book? Well, there are actually, I'd have to actually look to see. There are five Qigong exercises. There are 100 acupressure points. There are um, 
probably about 65 herbal formulas, and those are all combined in many different ways for many different types of conditions that a person might want to address. And I don't, I don't know that I even well, numbered these, but there's a lot. Whatever there, there ails are, you, there are there's dozens. something for you. Whatever ails you, dozens. there's an exercise and a remedy that he can suggest. Now, in the very short time we have left, I think we have a minute or so, how can we get a hold of you? What are you up to that we can find out about? And most importantly, how do we buy your book? Uh, let's start with the last one first. Okay. That's easiest. Uh, the book is published by Llewellyn Publications. So you can order it directly from Llewellyn on their website. It's available in most um, brick and mortar bookstores, Barnes and Noble and others. It's of course available on Amazon. So if you just type in my last name, Cardoza, C-A-R-D-O-Z-A, in any of the search engines that you might want to be searching, and Chinese medicine or, yeah, Chinese medicine will work just fine. And you'll get both of my books and the DVD that I have out too. Uh, if you do it in Amazon and if you do it in Llewellyn, you get both of the books. Barnes and Noble, you probably get both of the books. So that's the easiest ways for you to get the book itself. Um, I'm, I teach regularly at Brookline Taiji. Uh, they're on a seven week class cycle and the next seven week cycle begins, I believe, the, um, the week after Labor Day, this coming September. So. Uh, I'll be teaching six classes a week there on Mondays and Tuesdays. That's one way you can uh, get to study with me. I also teach a lot of private lessons and I offer private workshops. You can go to my website, which is a little out of date, but you'll still be able to get a hold of me. The website is compassionate-arts.com and my email address is on there, stephen at compassionate-arts.com. So you can get in touch with me in those ways. Stephen, this has been so instructive, and I so would love to have you do a workshop at the Milton Public Library. We'll see if we can make that happen. In the meantime, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Suzette Standring, and it has been such a healing exercise to have Stephen Cardoza here with us today. Thank you, and we'll see you the next time. Thanks so much, Suzette. It was great being here. Thank you.